These are my people. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Alvarez. <laughs> Welcome to the DTS Sound Space. I always appreciate you in the front because you got here stupid early, right? To get rail, like we're at Lollapalooza. Yeah. Amazing. It's like it's the last day on earth and you just needed to be up front. I get it. I hear you. Uh, it's a really special room. We're going to have a conversation with Mr. Marcus Mumford about a record that I hope you've all listened to ad nauseum because it's absolutely stunning. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Marcus Mumford. <laughs> These dedicated souls. Marcus, your right-hand man, Gavin, just came up to me and he's like, I remember you from Acoustic Christmas because you were stalking Chris Moss. That's right, you yeah, were. Yeah, so, so at the, is he still with you guys? Uh, he's, he's in London. Yeah, he had a, like a drummer, a touring drummer, who is just the most blessed thing you've ever seen on planet Earth. And as soon as they sat down, that was the first thing I talked about, like the professional that I am. He's from Luxembourg, and his name is Christoph Maas. Oh, Chris Maas, yeah. but he's so handsome, we call him Christmas and birthday. Christmas and birthday. Yeah. I want to tell you guys a real quick story about the first time I got to interview Marcus and the crew. It was at Acoustic Christmas. <laughs> 2019 when we did it at the Honda Center and I'm like here these Brits are coming in and I, I hang out with a lot of people from the UK and they they curse and they make it sound so elegant so he sits down and I'm like do not say the F word do not say the C word I will get fired no bad words so he's like all right nutter I got this and as soon as the camera is rolling I'm like is everyone having a fucking good time he's like what the fuck was that what are you doing what the fuck <laughs> And then I just remember you being so charming and so easy to talk to, which is why it's a pleasure to be here with you today. I mean, I've hung out with Americans enough to know that you're all <laughs> hypocrites, so <laughs> I wasn't surprised at all. <laughs> this is the kind of banter that he gives, which is why I'm appreciative of being here with you. I'm going to ask you the first question is, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. It's nice to be back in LA. When um, I look at your social media a lot because you're active on IG and I love watching you zip around on the birds and I like seeing the Portland airport through your eyes. It's a beautiful it's airport. It's a beautiful that. airport. They've really put some work into that airport. But if I may say so, um, you look happy and yeah. liberated and you yeah. look like like you're almost like the, you've got this childlike joy. It's just you look free. I've, I've been working on that. Yeah? So thanks. Yeah. So uh, the, I am. The record, would you say, is it a product of like 30 years of something you didn't talk about or is that just one of the aspects of self-titled? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's well, well spotted. It is just one of, um, one of the aspects of it. Really, it's a record about freedom. And so I'm glad that you feel it's reflected in how I present to the world at the moment because it's real. You know, I wanted to make an album that was real to my experience which included some gnarly stuff and included quite a lot of good stuff um, and quite a lot of freedom and healing and real real things that I've experienced yeah. as well as trauma. As well as that. Shit, you know? Yeah, I got that right off the bat. I was like, oh, here's where we deal with it. So the record starts with this incredible song by the name of Cannibal. So you take what you're facing and you just grab it by the throat and you go for the jugular. That was a choice to start the record like that. Why did you want to put it up front? Is it to get it out of the way? Yeah, because I felt like it would have been uh, sort of complicit in the way that I've hidden for a lot of my life to hide it later in the record. It just felt real to put it first, which in some ways has been unhelpful because then it presents <laughs> like it's a whole record about that, which it's not. But it felt just true. I mean, I was like a month away from putting it out. I was having a wobble thinking like, do I really want this to be the record that's known for that song? Because it's not the whole story. And Brandy Carlisle called me up, who's one of my collaborators on the album and a dear friend, and said, like, dude, don't be afraid. It's where the record started. It's where it should begin. Because it was the first song I wrote for the record. I was just in a period of writing for the sake of writing, like not thinking at all about how I was going to release it or who with. Or I was just writing technically for fun. Didn't turn out that fun to start with. But, <laughs> um, just sort of following my nose creatively. And I wrote that song first. And then I wrote Grace, the second song, which is like the response to it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get there. Don't you worry, <laughs> and then Marcus I played Mumford. Anyway, so then it kind of started unraveling. <laughs> I want to say some, a couple more things about Cannibal because it really is, God, I love that song so much. 
I, there was a part, there's a part three minutes and two seconds in where I'm like, Marcus, Oliver, Johnstone, Mumford, oh, how really nice. dare you? How dare you make me feel these things? I was not prepared. Yeah. At three minutes and two seconds into the song when the song explodes, yeah. I didn't see that coming. And the more I listen to the song, I still, I still don't anticipate it because I'm so in the, the rest of it. And then it just strikes me in the chest like a lightning bolt. And it's my favorite part. The first time my wife heard that part. Yeah. Because there's a demo of it that I did at home, which, it, you know, it's much more sort of like slow build, what we call ski jump, you know, structure like that. And it just wasn't right. And so Blake and I worked on that rec record here, the version that's on the album, and of Cannibal. And the first time my wife heard it, she had headphones on. And when that came in, she kind of like flinched and then lasted the sort of minute that last takes off her headphones. She goes, I fucking hate it. <laughs> Stop it, she hated it. And I was like, that's the reaction I kind of <laughs> wanted from you, honestly. <laughs> like, you okay, I'm on to something then. <laughs> Holy shit. I have to say, the first time, and I wanted to... She changed her mind, by no, the No, way, no, no, no. I wanted to touch upon something because the first time I heard self-titled... I was expecting something or I was ready to judge because you're Marcus Mumford. Let's see what Marcus Mumford has to offer. Is it going to be more like Mumford and Sons? So I heard it with those ears, if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah, of course. That's and then I put my headphones on and I listened to it a second time and a third time. And all of a sudden, yes, I heard your story, but then they became my songs too. Yeah. And I started hearing deeper into the songs like Better Off High has this chick 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 yeah. thing and this like horn elephant thing that comes yeah, in at the exactly, end. That's exactly, yeah, that's the <laughs> best description I've heard of the fretless guitar <laughs> so far. Yeah. Okay, so Cannibal happens and then <laughs> it's very obvious that you wanted to close the chapter and change the page because Grace is a completely different tone and that was by design, yes? Yeah, it was. It was like, yeah, really turning over the page. Yeah, and like, it works. Okay, what's next? You know? Well, that's brilliant because that's why it's not about Cannibal, <laughs> that thing you were worried about the record being. As soon as Grace comes on, you're like, oh, totally different direction. And it's seamless. And then every other song, you've always been one of my favorite lyricists. I think you're at the top of your game currently as far as lyrics. Thank you. Some of the things that come out are so poetic and <laughs> raw at the same time. I was reading some of the lyrics. I'm like, how? Like, where does one get off being that poetic? Because I'm like, roses are red, violets are blue. I like you, but you smell like poo. Like, that's what I bring to the table. What was? Would you say is there a favorite lyric that you have, or a song that you're that you impressed yourself with? Uh, I really like. I really like the lyrics. Only child. That's the one. That's like, that's the one that makes that sort of tickles me. That's the um, one. every night we're playing it at the moment because it's. It's quite mean, and it's supposed to be quite tongue-in-cheek. And I, uh, yeah, I like that one. All right. You collaborate with four outstanding women on this album. Claro, Monica Martin, Brandi Carlisle, who's insane, and Phoebe Bridgers. Did you choose to collaborate with only and women? And Danielle Ponder also sings on Grace. Okay. Did you choose to collaborate with those lovely humans, or did they come to you? Yeah, Janet Jackson wasn't available. She <laughs> Um, was there Rihanna anybody else? Rihanna was busy, <laughs> as planning. always, it seems. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that it was. It was really organic. Honestly, it felt. Um, it felt right. And and Julia Michaels as well. I wrote with um, for one of the songs, and it was just. I think I was at a stage in my life where I was ready and really needed to work with women again. Because I'd been in quite a male-dominated environment for a long yeah, time, work-wise. Correct. But behind the scenes, um, the women were playing a larger and larger role in the health of my life, and I, I think there were some emotional aspects to this record that were that needed to be in the hands of women, mm -hmm. um, and I needed to be in the hands of women when I was like in this sort of testosterone-filled. Um, uh, space of vulnerability it was the, typically the strength of a woman to come along and lift me over those walls and that happened each time it happened with Claro who's like fucking 13 years old or whatever. <laughs> um, it happened with Claro who really like took me by the hand and guided me through um, this song that we wrote together and happened with Brandy Phoebe Phoebe you know came in and was just cool. stoked that I got the word heinous into a song. <laughs> um, and 
and and Monica really helped to finish the record, you know, without her. And she sang so beautifully on that yeah. song that we put her up in the mix above. She's above me in the mix. She's, She's out of go. Um, I'm blanking. Go on light. Go in light. Go in light. Yeah. She's yeah, and that's yeah. I think that's my like t second or third. They're all freaking beautiful. Cool. Marcus <laughs> Oliver, Johnstone <laughs> Mumford. <laughs> Um, you choose to end the record with one of the more powerful voices I've ever heard in my lifetime, besides yours. See what I did there? Mm. Uh, Brandy Carlisle. Yeah. How did you, just the way that you thought about opening the record with Cannibal, how did you know where to end it? Yeah, I had quite a clear idea in my head for that. Um, and it's one that normally other musicians are quite judgmental of, like stealing bits from certain songs. It's seen as sort of lazy. Like, we'll write a whole new song, you know. But I... I like the idea of cross-referencing those two songs and having them bookend the record and and move from this place of like uh, hypothetical forgiveness to more planned forgiveness. Um, uh, uh, and she, she really w symbolized a lot of the feeling I had around making this record, which was one of support really, and that I would never have made it on my own. So even though it's talked of as a solo record it's the most collaborative and support filled piece of music I've ever been involved in and I never would have made it on my own and she came along put her arm around me and said like dude whatever it takes to help get this out women coming here. to the rescue again yeah yeah and women so we coming. went to the studio that day and 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 recorded that song just as it is now you get to take this on the road and watching it's always cool as an artist I'm assuming to watch people sing your lyrics back to you but seeing as this is a completely different record from another dare I say more personal place Watching people sing songs like Cannibal back to you, that's also got to be continued healing, yeah? I don't really need anything from that song now, okay. honestly. I, I don't feel like, for me, it wouldn't have felt healthy to put it out needing something from the response. That's I put it out when I was like comfortable with the idea of putting it out and didn't need much from it. Now it feels like it's other people's now. Yeah. I'll play it and I wrote it and stuff, but I feel like it's... And that happened on the last day of mixing for me, so... When you're able to say, like, on your second or third listen, it felt Another like mine. they're yours. Yep. I'm so stoked about that because that's really my, my, that was my, someone asked me the night before we finished, we handed it in, like, what's your, what's your ambition for the record? And I think they were asking me about record sales and stuff, and I don't understand how any of that works. So <laughs> I said, <laughs> you know, my ambition <laughs> for the record is that people can identify their own stories in it and, mm -hmm. and make it theirs because it doesn't feel like mine anymore. It feels like, something you birth yep. into the world and then other people get to it worked it. round one i heard your story round two three and four it just they became more mine Sick. and um and that's what you want to do with music right at the end of the day when i look at this record which by the way and i'm not just saying this is lip service it's stunning thank i love you. it so much I hear you. thank you I um receive it. <laughs> i've said this on this stage many times i think that vulnerability is a superpower but in order to acquire that superpower you have to go through the shit and you went through it and you made it into these amazing songs and you gave those as a gift to us. My last question to you, would would you say that there's some sort of like a forgiving nature to this album? Is is there anything about forgiveness? Yeah, I mean, I think eventually it's all about forgiveness and it's forgiveness of self as much as anyone, any exterior person. Um, and I think to get to forgiveness, you have to go through truth, you know, it's like the truth and reconciliation thing that Mandela and Tutu taught us about. But I think you have to go back to looking at the facts and the reality. And I think that can happen on a micro and a macro level, which is why I studied, you know, Brian Stevenson and EJI stuff so carefully when I was writing Stonecatcher. Because, yeah, I think we have to confront the reality of our past in order to receive yeah. like reconciliation or forgiveness in the future. I think the strongest people in the world are the forgiving because they choose not to drink a poison that doesn't belong to them. So I think forgiveness is the best place to be. Mm. Um, you've given us a lot with this album and now taking it on the road. It seems like you're having a really great time. Yeah. I love I love what you're doing with your social media presence. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun to watch. I am going to get out of all of your <laughs> ways and I'm going to let this man do his thing and sing us some songs. Are you ready for that? Yeah. They're like, shut the fuck up and get off the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make some more noise for Marcus Mumford. No one 
the nights we left those barrack street hotels to the corners where we wished each other well it's all It's a song called Better Off High. Bless that medicine for bringing round that click in your head.
Well, bless that medicine for bringing round that click in your head. Better off high than dead. Thank you. I haven't tried this song like this before, so I might fuck it up. <laughs> but you know, you you might know. I'm afraid. I don't care. Uh, well, you might not care. Chasing the ghosts all around the room, and now you're strung up on the ceiling. And it's you of all people, it's a dangerous game to play with fire for a brand new mind. A dangerous game, a man. Get me out of my mind Tied to the hope of another way through It's chained at my ankles They took away my shoes now I see the only way through is chained at the ankles with you of all people get me out of my mind out of my mind out of my mind oh it's a day left no food for you to eat you can't bully me teeter you see i have seen the same i know the shame in your defeat but i will hold on hope and i won't let you choke on the noose around your neck and i Find strength and pain, and I will change my ways. Know my name as it's cool again. Cause 
Cause I have other things to fill my time You take what is yours and I'll take mine Now let me hear the truth Which will refresh my broken mind So tie me to a post and block my ears I can see widows and orphans through my tears And all my call despite my faults And despite my growing fears
curtains closing They're still pouring drinks And of all those crazy ways you think I love you like But I can't reason With the past we face I'm sorry for the mess we made And if you want, we'll pick through my mistake You'll see me cry But maybe we could put it all behind I did not intend to force your hand Ooh. Even hope that we would understand well, Maybe we'll be always trying well, Maybe we'll be always trying Well, thank you so much for having me. I tell you, I tell you, it feels pretty cool. Like you go back there and you do the in the studio, do the liners. It feels pretty cool. Like you listen to K Rock. Yeah. Like, there's one, basically, there's one radio station in the world you want to do that for. It's this one. I fucking love this place. And I'm grateful to you for having me. So thank you.
And I don't know if I'm ever gonna get used to this grace like a river. Grace like a river Thank you very much. I'll see you again. Thank you.